Yeah, so actually quite a bit I wanted to cover here, but um, I'm just gonna sort of give you the quick tour of it. Um, I think the context here for hiring is there's a big talent gap for, um, for AI skills. So um, you, know, you can ask the question of like, are, how many people are there that know how to build AI systems? There's different estimates for this, um, ranging from 5,000 to um, something like 300,000, right? But um, that's kind of a very small number compared to the number of software developers just in the US. And especially compared to the number of software developers in the entire world. Um, so there's, the implication of that is that there's a fierce competition for top AI talent. Um, a couple of quotes that we've seen, you know, everyone agrees that um, there's an intense competition for how to hire people. Um, academic conferences are, you know, frenzied meat markets. And uh, they're driven by corporate recruiters and seven figures. It sounds very sinister. Um, uh, you know, another quote is, hiring is crazy right now. This is a young field. It got popular very quickly. Ton of demand, not a lot of supply. Um, hiring for ML is really challenging. It takes way more time and effort than we expected. All right, so um, that's kind of the context for the rest of what we're going to say. Um, now I want to talk about sourcing. So where, do you, where can you go to find good ML people? Um, you know, again, coming back to our list of common ML roles, the first three of these are typically just sourced from your existing pipelines for these roles. Um, the one nuance is I think it's uh, helpful to look for people who have a demonstrated interest in AI because then it's more likely that they'll have adopted the mindsets that they need um, in order to succeed working with ML organizations. Um, but for these, uh, for these, for the other roles, I think you know I want to talk about like the wrong way to hire machine learning engineers. Um, so this is a job description for a unicorn machine learning engineer. And I'm curious like, how many people have seen one like this. But you know, so your duties might be you have to keep up with the state of the art. You have to implement models from scratch. You have to have a deep understanding of mathematics and an ability to invent new models. You have to build tool and infrastructure for the ML team yourself. Um, you have to build your own data pipelines, um, <laughs> deploy and monitor models into production. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I'm getting to that. I'm getting to that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so, so the requirements are obviously you have to have a PhD, four years of TensorFlow experience at a minimum, um, four years as a software engineer, and you have to have publications in all the top ML conferences, right? Um, oh yeah, and you have to have experience building large-scale distributed systems, right? So how, how many have seen an ML job description that looks a little bit like this? Okay, basically literally everyone. Um, so I think the right way to do this is to, um, you know, if you're looking for an ML engineering role in particular, not an ML research role, is to hire for software engineering skills first. Um, and then, well, actually, so I don't, um, I'll caveat this. I think there are a few right ways of doing this. This is one of them. So one thing you can do is you can look for software engineering skills first um, and then train people to do machine learning. It's easier than ever to learn how to do this. Um, I think you can go more junior. So. Um, at this point, most undergrad computer science students, um, at least at Berkeley, where I'm more familiar with it, um, have graduated with some ML experience. So like the junior part of your pipeline, this might be a solved problem. And I think lastly, and maybe this is most important, is be more specific about what you need, right? Like not every ML engineer needs to do DevOps. And so I think if you are really principled about like what this specific role needs, then you can hire a lot better. Um, hiring ML researchers, so um, I think one, Thing that's really good to do is to look for a quality of publications, not quantity. Um, and so this can mean different things for your organization. Um, could be things that are related to what you do. Um, I think another thing that's, that's good if you ha have a more industry-focused position is to look for researchers that have an eye for important problems. Um, I think one thing that I've seen is that a lot of researchers tend to focus on trendy problems without really considering why they matter. And that's not the right instinct to have in um, a business context. Similarly, you can look for researchers with experience outside of academia if you want people who are likely to not have a super researchy mindset. Um, consider hiring people from adjacent fields and training them. And then finally, and I, this is also very important, consider hiring people without PhDs. Right? It's, again, ML research is relatively accessible, and so I think you can find good people outside of those, um, those hallowed halls. So sourcing, um, you, know, you have your standard sources, LinkedIn, et cetera. Um, I think monitoring archive and attending top conferences, talking to the authors of papers that you like, looking for re-implementations of papers that you like, and um, going to ML research conferences and talking to people there. So how to attract people, right? Like there's this fierce competition for talent, how do you win? 
Um, so I think the first things to, to ask are like, what do machine learning practitioners actually want? And I think what a lot of them want is they want to work with cutting edge tools and techniques. They want to build skills and knowledge in this you know, exciting field of deep learning. They want to work with other excellent people. They want to work on interesting data sets and they want to do work that matters. All right, and so how do you make your company stand out on these axes? Um, for cutting edge tools and techniques, it's you know, maybe some of your work should be on cutting edge research oriented stuff that you should publicize, whether that's through publishing in conferences or something else. And you should empower people on your team to try new technologies, even if this isn't the core of what you do, to allow people to do it in some of their time. Um, building a team cu culture around learning. So OpenAI has a concept called Learning Day, where people spend one day a week just sort of learning about whatever it is that is interesting to them that might be helpful for their job. Um, in terms of like finding excellent people, I think a strategy that can work here is to hire really high profile people, because they tend to attack uh, attract other good people. You might have to pay them a lot of money to do this. And then ha um, help your best people become really high profile people. So support them in publishing, support them in writing blog posts. Sell the uniqueness of your data set in your recruiting materials. So a lot of big companies have really interesting data sets that people get to work with. And if you stress how interesting your data set is, that'll attract machine learning people. And then finally, sell the mission of your company. Right. So make sure that you're doing work, um, that if you're doing work that matters, then people are aware of that. Um, interviewing, I think the main point I want to cover here is um, I think instead of trying to test for everything, just hire for people's strengths. So try to find where they're excellent and then meet a minimum bar everywhere else. So you can um, validate your hypotheses about what they're going to be really good at. So if they're a researcher, make sure they can think creatively about new ML problems. If they're an engineer, make sure that they're a good general software engineer. And then to see if they meet a minimum bar in, in other areas, you know, for researchers, you should test to see if they're at least like competent software engineers. And then software engineers, you should make sure that they have some basic understanding of ML. Um, ML interviews, I'm going to skip this because um, one of our guest lecturers is talking yeah. about it in detail tomorrow. I think maybe what we could do is just do the rest of this tomorrow. Sure. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and then do questions like during the beer hour at 7 p.m. Perfect. Cool. All right. Thanks, everyone. Let's move on.